All right, I want to talk about um, a project NASA is going through. Check this out. So NASA has just rejected missions to moons of Jupiter and Neptune. Here's what we would have found out. So I'm a little disappointed actually about this because um, I, I, I'm excited about them going to these kind of places. Uh, it's been 30 years since NASA visited Venus with the Magellan Orbiter in 1990. Now, two new missions have been selected to explore the deadly atmosphere, crushing pressures, and volcanic landscape. The process dates back to February 2020 when NASA announced that four missions were to undergo a nine-month peer review process for feasibility. They were all part of the Discovery Program, started by NASA in 1992 to bring together scientists and engineers to create exciting, groundbreaking missions. Set aside from the flagship missions, such as Curiosity and Perseverance, the missions operating under Discovery have taken unique and innovative approach to exploring the solar system. Uh, the two winning Venus, uh, Venus missions, Da Vinci and Veritas, have been awarded uh, 500 million US dollars and will be launched sometimes between 2028 and 2030. But the competition was tough for those two losing missions, which would have gone to Io and Triton. Oh. Uh, respectively, moons of Jupiter and Neptune. So what are we missing out? As a result, Io is a strange moon, even amongst moons, who are strange to begin with. Um, as Jupiter's innermost moon, orbiting a mere 350,000 kilometers above the cloudy tops, it gives Io an extreme heating mechanism that makes it uh, the most volcanically active object in the solar system, sporting over 400 volcanoes. You might think, given we live on a planet with a fair share of volcanoes, that we'd have a good idea of where all this heat is coming from. In fact, according to Alfred McEwen, principal investigator in the proposed Io Volcanic Explorer, or IVO mission, we're still profoundly ignorant of how it actually works. IVO was designed to perform multiple flybys of the moon and use a suite of instruments to map the activity on and below the surface. By collecting information on Io's magnetic and gravitational fields, t uh, taking videos of the enormous lava eruptions, and analyzing the gas and dust escaping from the moon, IVO would help scientists learn how Io's heat is generated and lost. All of this information is crucial, not just for awesome videos of space volcanoes, because this kind of extreme activity is believed to be an important aspect of planetary formation and evolution. By understanding the processes that can change, uh, that can drive change on Io, we can ultimately learn more about how planets and moons came to be. And, and uh, this is about the ice giants, which I believe is Triton. Oh, Trident, excuse me. Um, no, no, it is. Is it Triton? I think it is Triton. Um, the least explored and understood planets are Uranus and Neptune, and they are home to some of the most bizarre things in the solar system. Uranus has an axial tilt, the angle of the axis of rotation compared to the plane of its orbit to the sun, so extreme that it spins on its side. And I actually found this out. Uh, Pluto also spins on its axis like that. Uh, this is thought to be the result of a giant collision in the solar system's past. Meanwhile, Neptune is home to the only large moon that orbits backwards around its parent planet, the curious Triton. This, uh, the peculiar orbital arrangement isn't where the oddities end. The plane in which Triton orbits is offset by an extreme 30, uh, 23 degrees compared to Neptune's, and it is believed to have moved to Neptune from the Kuiper belt, the region beyond Neptune's orbit filled with icy leftovers from the solar system's formation. And here is a, these are my favorite too, these cross cuts here. So here is Triton. All right, we can see a cross cut. This is the icy shell. It's, we don't know if it's an ocean. Is Triton an ocean world? I, I love this. Enceladus uh, has, a, has an underground ocean that we believe has underground thermal vents that have bacteria living deep, way down deep in our oceans. Um, so I think there's probably life there. So anything with an ocean like this, I think has a chance for life. So we'll see. Triton also has an active ionosphere. A layer of charged particles in its atmosphere 10 times more active than any other moon, which isn't powered by the sun. 
as well as constantly changing and dynamic surface coated in what might be nitrogen snow. The Voyager 2 photographed the moon. It discovered cryovolcanoes, geysers erupting ice and gas up to 8 kilometers high, which might indicate a subsurface ocean. The proposed Trident mission would have explored these many strange things about the moon. It proposed a three-pronged approach using instruments to measure the magnetic field of Triton. It would have identified the presence and structure of a subsurface ocean. High-resolution infrared cameras would have allowed the spacecraft to image the entire surface using the sunlight reflected from Neptune, showing scientists what had changed since the last visit in 1989. Finally, the spacecraft would have tried to discover how Triton's surface remains so dynamic and young. Ultimately, Triton and IVO lost out to the Venus missions. It would have been fascinating to once again explore the outer reaches of the solar system or see the colossal volcanoes of Io. But Venus is a fascinating planet with mysteries and potential all of its own. In fact, even um, last year, they claim, scientists claimed that they found traces of organic material on Venus. Although I'm pretty sure a couple months later it was debunked. Um, either way, very exciting because I'm really looking forward to exploring our universe, our solar system. We are, we are watching this new age of man. We are getting into space. I mean, we've got most rich, one of the richest men alive. Um, he's about to join, you know, climb into his phallic rocket and fly into space. And that's just because why not go to space, you know? And we got SpaceX making incredible moves with the Dragon capsule. China just built its own international space, well, excuse me, the Chinese space station. Uh, we have the international space station that they are not a part of anymore because they are building their own space station. Uh, you may have heard about a rocket part that was gonna fall somewhere. Luckily it fell into the ocean and didn't hit anything, but it could have hit New York. Um, it could have hit, I, I think South Africa, somewhere along the Africa, uh, Southern part of Africa, um, just because of the way the orbit worked. Um, but that's, that was like one of 12 because they are basically building the Chinese, uh, space station right now. So we'll see, we'll see. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about the future of space.